I appreciate and ask that you will continue praying that God will continue to heal me. Uh, there is much evidence that he's doing such. And stories of my demise are, of course, very false. <laughs> <laughs> so please continue praying that God would work in me and continue to re re reinvigorate and revive and give me the spirit of Christ day by day. Thank God for my wife who is doing such a bang-up job with me to bring me back from several doctor's visits coming. But God is good and God is on his throne. And God's work has got to be done. And no matter who does it, if it is God's work, it is very important and must be accomplished. Today I hope to resume with the Psalms. I hope you're enjoying. Can I see a show of hands of those of you who are enjoying Psalms? This is not to replace your Bible reading and thank you very much. But we are striving to shine as much light as we can on the Word of God and to be able to bring to God's people the value and the relevance of God's truth as it is printed in the Word. We said as a basis that the first 72 Psalms were written by David himself. This being among the 72, very much that we can remember David, the sweet harpist of Israel. Psalm 10, therefore, begins thus. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? This seems to be a charge. It's a false charge. God does not run from truth. God does not run from trouble. God does not hide himself from us. David is addressing this because no doubt in his time, as in ours, it is a prevalent belief that God is so annoyed with man that he hides from man. If you remember the second question of Genesis, God asked, where art thou? Where are you, Adam? So God is always seeking to find man and to change him as much as God and as much as man would have God do so. So God is not hiding. God confronts, God faces, and God deals with the troubles and the difficulties that we find ourselves in. Verse 2, the wicked in his pride does persecute the poor. Who is the wicked? Anyone against God's way of life is wicked. We are all wicked unless and until we have been redeemed by Jesus Christ, God's Son. So here, the people of the world, they persecute the poor. God's word said, blessed are the pure. That's one of the Beatitudes. Let them be taken in the device or devices that they have imagined. Man has come up with all sorts of devices, all sorts of ways of thwarting, frustrating God's plan, but the, the psalm says, let them be taken in their own devices, whatever they've imagined in their own hearts, let them run themselves straight into it, or straight into them, that they might find the wrath of God in proportion to their disobedience to God. Verse 3, for the wicked boasteth, that is of course old English, boasts of, of his heart's desire, you heard people plan to do evil and boast about it. The wicked do that, and God will deal with them accordingly. And bless the covetous. Who would want to bless the covetous? Except the wicked person. But God will deal with them in time. Whom the Lord abhors. Isn't it a tragic thing to be thought of being abhorred by God? We don't want the abhorrence of God. We want the love of God. We want the mercy of God. So the psalmist is saying here that it is better to be on God's side than not to be. Verse 4, the wicked, once again, he's addressing the wicked. The world is full of wicked people. The world is full of those who oppose God's way of life. And David is here saying, the wicked, through the pride of his countenance, Facial beauty, facial appearance, 
will not see after God. No, he thinks he is it. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. And we know that the world is not seeking God. The world is seeking its own way. And it opposes God's way. That's why those of us who have been called by God should obey God and seek to do His will. God is not in all His thoughts. Let that not be said about us. Let God be in our thoughts continually. Let God be continually praised in our hearts and in our lives and in our thoughts. Verse 5. His ways are always, not that we're always, are always grievous. Your judgments are far above, out of his sight. That's the wicked. As for all his enemies, he puffs, blows at them. Doesn't think there's very much of them. He puffs at them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved. The wicked has a certain sense of intransigence. They feel they are it. They feel nothing can move me, nothing can affect me. As we go on, we'll find that boastful spirit is even more so brought out. I shall not be moved, for I shall never, never, I shall never be in adversity. Who said so? By being opposed to God's way of life, they are already in adversity and things will only get worse. Verse 7, his mouth is full of cursing. Cursing is so prevalent today. At the drop of a hat, people cursed. Say some of the worst words you've ever heard in your life. God said the wicked, his mouth is full of cursing and deceit. And fraud, it builds, it gets worse. Under his tongue. His mischief and vanity. In other words, the wicked are in trouble. The wicked is opposed to God. The wicked seems to be able to do nothing right, and that is the case. As long as you're outside the will of God, you are nothing but a pure mess. And that is exactly what the psalmist is pointing out here in these 18 verses. Verse 8, he sits in the lurking places of the village, or villages, in the secret places that he murder the innocent. We can become so slanderous, we can become so devices, we can trim people to shreds with our tongue. And God says the wicked, that is his forte. His eyes are privately set against the poor. Why is he so opposed to the poor? We're all poor, except God's Spirit redeems us, except God's Spirit makes of us something better than we are, because we're all sinners outside of Jesus Christ. So the wicked is opposed to the poor. He lies in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lies in wait to catch Again, the poor, he is opposed to the poor. He does catch the poor. When he draws him into his net. You know, this wicked of whom mankind is, is emblematic of Satan himself. And Satan is desirous of drawing us into his net. And if you remember that, we will be aware of his devices, as Paul says in 2 Corinthians. Verse 10, he crouches and humbles himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Self-explanatory. 10.11, 10, 
He had said in his heart. How did God know what he said in his heart? And God knows the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Many times when Christ was on earth, the, the gospel said he knew what they were thinking. He knew what they had in mind to do. <clears throat> and he would elude the crowd because they had nothing but evil in their heart. <clears throat> God had forgotten. He hides his face. He will never see it. God can hide from us, but he's not doing so now. God is anxious to show us himself and to make his plan known to us. First twelve, arise, O Lord. That's an important admonition. Arise, O Lord. Many times we want God to act now, and he will act when he is ready. But here the psalmist says, arise, O Lord, O God. Lift up your hand. Forget not the humble. And I hope you're humble in God's sight. God cannot use the proud. God cannot use the one who is ever boastful. God seeks to use the humble. And that ought to be our objective, to be humble in the sight of God. That he might raise up those who are base <clears throat> and bring down those who self abound Therefore, that the wicked condemn God. That's what they do. We can always feel God is out of the picture. They have no time for God. He has said in his heart, Thou will not requite it. Of course God will requite it. God will bring all sin to judgment. God will bring all evil to the light in its time. Verse 14. Thou hast seen it, for thou beholdest, or behold, mischief and spite to requite it with your hand. And God will bring all evil works to judgment. Actually, all works to judgment in that great day. The poor commits himself unto you. Thou art the helper of the fatherless. It seems as though God has a special place in his heart, in his mind, and in his plan for the fatherless. And God will reward the fatherless in his time. God will take care of the fatherless. Let us who can help as much as we can. The fatherless, I think the church has a plan whereby it was in God's original plan that the fatherless we helped. And they helped very much at the feast time and God is aware of the fatherless, and he will be a father to the fatherless as he is a father to us. Verse 15. Break you, O thou, the arm of the wicked. What a request. To ask God to break the arm of the wicked. Well, God will cast into outer darkness the whole person. So asking God to break the arm is not that unusual. Among the Psalms, in the, you know, the Psalms that are called imprecatory Psalms, where the righteous is calling on God to do things that are, wow, break his arm. God can restore the arm. When Christ was on earth, you remember he restored the arm of the guy who had the withered hand. So if even God breaks it now, he will restore it. And he can do so. And the wicked and the evil man seek out his wickedness <clears throat> till thou find none. Keep seeking out his wicked ways and his wicked behavior until there's nothing like wickedness left in him. And we as God's people must also let God seek anything in us that is not in accordance with his plan. Verse 16 of 18. The eternal is king forever and that is a truism god is king forever all of the kings all of the potentates are only temporary rulers god is king forever and ever the heathen are perished out of his land that 
that's again self-explanatory. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. And we ought to be the humble ones. And God will hear our desire. And God will hear our pain. And God will hear our grieving or hurt. How many times have I laid in my bed and cried to God for strength? Thank God it's coming back. I was telling my wife, there was a day I cried in the hospital like a baby. I mean, cried, I think I bawled it. I was in such pain. And you know, nobody came. Eventually a nurse came and said, well, the doctor doesn't have any painkillers for you now, so sorry about that. And I went back bawling. <laughs> but God hears the cry of the humble. And God knows our pain. And God knows our pain. Pain. Thou wilt, thou wilt prepare their hearts. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear. God is not deaf. It is an Isaiah that says the Lord's arm is not short, nor is his ear short. God will hear. It is for us to pray and seek God's face and look to him that he might in time, not might, but will in time, answer our prayer and come to our assistance. Here we are with the sermon in time coming to the last verse. The judge, to judge the fatherless. And again, God is aware of the fatherless. And God will take care of them in his own time. And the oppressed. That the man of the earth. I like that twist on that. The man of the earth. Here's where man belongs, on the earth. But God has promised us a place in his kingdom. And he's made that possible through his son. Man of the earth may no more oppress. Man seems to have a propensity to oppress and to hurt and to distress. You heard of the killings again last night in Bangladesh. It seems as though that's all we hear every week. It's a killing. 20 people were killed last night. 49 in Florida a couple of weeks ago. And it seems to be getting worse. Does that tell us that the kingdom of God can be pretty close? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So sad as these times are, they are glorious times ahead. Let us continue to seek God's truth and God's way as we look into his word and especially into the sound.